Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Queen Taramina's on Oriented Neighbor Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Oriented Neighbor Television. Let's talk about this week here, obviously. Um, we're going to recap the girls' districts, um, look at the girls' regionals. Last week for boys' basketball season, um, North Farmington is the last team standing um, after um, knocking off Warren D. LaSalle. We're going to break their um, matchup with River Rouge coming up. Um, of course, River Rouge is right now one of those teams that are red hot right now. Um, North Farmington is going to be playing them in the state quarterfinals um, with that winner either taking on Muskegon or Zeeland West, um, which would be a really interesting matchup. Um Let's look at, of course, the recaps. I mean, obviously, in girls' basketball districts, a lot to talk about. Um, wonder where everybody's going to be at heading into next year. Um, obviously, when you look at the districts, they kind of really, some of them were a little surprising. Others were not really that surprising. It kind of really, you know, went, it could have went either way. I mean, like, I know the districts over at Lake Orion, over at um, Watch Vermont, and also at, um, Roy, I mean, Stony Creek and I'm rock. I mean, like Blue Bay Hills and I'm uh, Troy Athens and um, and um, you know, could have gone either way. Um, and also had a more cousin, I could could have gone also e- either way because that both um, the districts at Water for my and at Warren Cousin involved last second shots, the one at Troy Athens involved in overtime. Um, and then of course, the Stony Creek game district. That, was a it was a tight drama um so we're gonna look at the regionals coming up also um as well for the remaining away teams that are still in the postseason so let's look at let's start with these districts here obviously we're gonna go with district 60 um this was at harper woods um harper woods kind of had it pretty easy they had no issue with them um, east point um and then they went on and destroyed Harper with Chandler Park Academy, which was a bit of a surprise. That something I didn't expect was what the um, Pioneers did. Um, for Coach Latoya Todd, um, you know, and what she, I mean, like, got to give credit what she's done. I know Harper Woods, you know, has been in a really, um, I mean, tough division this year in the white, but, you know, to win a district title, that's a big deal. Um, so, they're going to move on to the region. Um, they're going to go over to Hazel Park, Region 15. Um, it's a very difficult district. Um, of course, they also another team that was in there was Ferndale, Ferndale U. Both of them were at, were at um, Detroit Country Day. Um, Ferndale U had a really rough outing, um, <clears throat> losing to um, Detroit Lincoln King Academy. Um, and then Ferndale, of course, won their matchup via forfeit against Detroit Henry Ford, but then getting just um losing by twenty four to Detroit Country Day, um sixty seven forty three. Um so for, for when you look at that region, we're gonna preview the region, but when you look at that district over there at Country Day, um I think there was a couple things here that we learned. Ferndale's gonna be a beast to watch next year. And obviously their best players are freshmen. Um, you know, obviously coach Keith Paris has done, did a nice job with that team. Um, winning, you know, they, they won 17 games this year. I mean, and that's a credit, you know what I mean? Especially, and I've said this a couple of weeks ago with Ferndale was they've got to build program strengths and you got a very good eighth grade class coming in. Um, the question is going to be, it's the numbers. When I look at Ferndale, when I look at the Eagles, always the big question is the numbers. Do the numbers work out? Do the numbers add up? We don't know. I mean, you got three very talented players on that team for Ferndale coming back. You got three very talented players. Then you add that eighth grade class. And I know a lot of people have been saying, you know, that some of those, that, those eighth graders that were, um, that were on that team over there were, um, could play on any varsity team. I mean, they're that good. Um, are they West Bloomfield level players? 
Um, I don't necessarily think so. Um, but like I said, I mean, I've seen a lot of talent, you know, and, you know, but for, for coach Keith Paris, it's, you've got to start building that program and, you know, and I'm not talking just the varsity. I'm talking your JV. I'm talking a freshman program. Ferndale historically has not had three programs. I mean, they have not. I mean, they've always had one program. And this is where I don't always agree with Ferndale Athletic Director and Ferndale Boys basketball coach Juan Rickman. Um, you gotta, if you want to look at long-term program success, you have to build your program. You have to build three programs, at least had two, you know, but you know, if you want to have long-term success, you have to look at, and it doesn't matter what, what enrollment says, but you gotta have like, you gotta build your program very similar. You know, you gotta build your program. You got to have the numbers in the program. You got to have the, you know, and it comes down to numbers for Ferndale because, and I think that's really where that gets me upset, you know, when you look at with them is the fact that they have one program, you know, it, it, I mean, it limits opportunities for others to, you know, to come out, you know what I mean? Like, you know, but if you have like a JV program, you have a freshman program, you're going to build, you're going to, and that's the key to building fresh program strength. You look at teams like Rochester Adams. I mean, there was, a, there was a time two years ago, Adams had two programs and then, and then they got back to three. Um, and there were times that Shea Lewis's program at Adams um, had two programs and that was it. You know, normally when you look at enrollment over at Rochester Adams, you know what I mean? They, they have, you know, they, they um they're they they're more than capable of having three programs, and you look at what Joe Malberg's done over there. Um, he's built three programs over there, and I think Adams is built for the long haul. Um, so when you really look at the program strength argument, it clear this it, the program strength argument clearly surrounds Ferndale. Now they're gonna say, well, we got a very good freshman class coming up. You know what I mean? Here's my point to that: you gotta build your JV. You got to build a freshman program. You build those programs or a JVA or a JVB team, you're going to be, the, you're going to sust long sustain success. I don't like the direction right now Ferndale's going because they got to build program. I mean, they just got to build program strength. I mean, the program's going the right direction, but am I a fan of just having one program? No. You got to have at least two or three. If you're going to be there for long-term success. So my take on Ferndale is at a great year, great season. Question's going to be is can they get the numbers? If they can get the numbers and build that long-term success, you know, then it's going to get that program better and better and better. Because if they, because if they rely on one program, I don't know where this is going to go. I don't think a lot of teams want to play them because they don't have, they only just have the one program. You know, and then you look at Ferndale, why they play a lot of showcase games, you know? I know they play a lot of showcase games to toughen them up, but there comes a danger to that when you look at your freshman and your JV programs. And this is where I get critical of Rickman. You know, you got to build your program, program strengths. And also Coach Paris as well. You got to build your program, program strength. You do that, I'll tell you, I'll guarantee you this. You build your program, not just one level. You got to build it three levels, two level. I mean, like two, it's okay. But if you build your program three levels, a freshman, a JV, and a varsity, your program's going to be built for a long-term success. So that's what I see with Ferndale. And I know, I know numbers are a challenge over there, and I get it. But I would say this to them. Just try. Just try. You know what I mean? You know? I mean, like, because, you know, it'll be much harder for, for, for a team 
that has to play just one program and instead of having to play like two or three, you know what I mean? If you play two or three, that's fine. You know, if, especially if you're a school that wants to go up like they do. I mean, and I expect Ferno to be up next year. Question is, we don't know what division they're going to be in. Um, but I'll tell you what, if they go to the Reds, I think they're going to have some trouble. Um, if, I think White may be the best case scenario for them because I think they got a chance to compete in that division. I mean, you know, but when you look at proven programs in the Red, um, It'll be interesting to see where Coach Paris goes with Ferndale. But like I said, the key for Ferndale for me is they got to build program strength. They got to build it. And I'm not talking about just the varsity. And yes, I know about that A grade class coming up. But you got to build a JV. But you got to also have a freshman. If you have just a JV program, that's fine. But you got to have at least two programs. Because if you just have one, and your program strength is going to be really questioned. So that's my take on Ferndale and their program right now. And I'm not, I'm not criticizing, you know, but I'm, I'm just saying is you got to have at least two programs. I mean, if you have one, that's a problem. Um, so that's my take on, on Ferndale. I mean, they had a tough road, tough loss in the district final of Birmingham Detroit Country Day. Um, they lost 67-43. Um, but Ferndale, they, there's a lot to like about them. Three returning players. Um, bulk of that team coming back. They did, they did lose one senior. Um, I think it's an opportunity for them to build on program strengths. Um, but we'll see. And we'll see. Let's go to Division 1. Um, District 32. This was over at, um, over at, um, Grand Blank. Um, Grand Blank ended up winning this district. They knocked off Oxford, sixty to thirty-eight. Um, Grand Blanks difference. They used their experience. Um, was a big difference in that game. Um, you know, when you look at Oxford, um, they got by Davison, had to survive Davison in the second round, but didn't have enough against um against Grand Blank. And you know, obviously, you know, you look at. We're, we're, what's the next direction for Oxford? What's going to happen? You do lose some key players on that team. You lose Peyton Richter. Um, you do lose um, Brady Elling. You lose, um, you know, and that's not going to be easy. You know, that's not going to be easy to to look at for Coach Rachel Breyer. Is, you know, you're going to lose a ton of talent. You're going to lose a lot of size. Um, they do have Mia Champagne coming back. You have Allison Huff Sedler coming back. Um, yeah, Sophie and Rob coming back. Um, you have, um, Emma Bugs coming back. Um, but when you look at Oxford, um, question is for them, you know, they were in the red this year and the red, you know, is not an easy division. And, you know, what the, and program strength, when I look at Oxford, you know, you do have a proven player coming in, coming in Tegan O'Connor. Um, but when you look at, um, when you look at Oxford and you look at the program, program strength, you know, they got some talent in that program. The problem with Oxford is the numbers. I mean, they built three programs, you know, they do use the five quarter rule really well. Um, but the question for me is with Oxford next year is going to be is, do they have the numbers? How are the levels at Oxford Middle School? I mean, Oxford, I know they do split their teams up into two teams. There's Oxford Gold and Oxford Blue. Um, so there is talent in that pipeline over there at Oxford. I mean, you look at, of course, you look at in the middle school ranks. You look at, you know, you look at, um, you know, in Lake Orion. You look at, they have Scripps, Walden, and Oakview. Um, Clarkson, you have Clarkston Gold, Clarkson Blue, Sashabaugh Blue. Clarkson Gold. I mean, and then you look at other middle schools. You got, you got Rochester schools, Stony Creek with the heart with heart. Some go to Ruther. Rochester, some go to Ruther, some go to West. Um, Adams, Van Heusen, um, some with and some with West. So, you know, there is talent when you look at the middle school system. 
And with Oxford's case, I'm curious to see what is the talent pool down at Oxford? What's the talent up there? I mean, that's the big question for Coach Breyer is how's the talent level going to be? And I think the summer's big for Oxford, I think, just to see who fits, you know what I mean, who's going to be, because you know how going can take a lot of shots. They have somebody about coming back, but the big question I have for Oxford, who's in that interior? Who's going to be in that interior? And that is the big question for Coach Breyer heading into the next year is who's going to be in that interior? I mean, I know Mia Champagne, they're counting on her with her size, but I'm not being mean to Mia, but she's not a guard. She's not a post. She's a guard. You know, she's more of a small forward type player. Um, so we'll see. I mean, but a lot of questions with Oxford next year. But, you know, for Oxford, it's a fourth straight loss to Grand Blank. Um, I don't know how the district's going to look for them next year when the districts come out in June. Um, do they send Oxford South or do they keep them with Grand Blank and Davis? I still think, honestly, in my opinion, I think if there, if you had to send an OA team to see Davis and Grand Blank and Lapeer, it's not Oxford. It's Clarkston. Because I'm not being mean to Clarkston, but when you look at the geographical part of it, Grand Blank is much closer to Clarkston than they are to Oxford. I mean, it would be interesting to see if Clarkston went up to Grand Blank um, in that district. It would be really interesting. They sent Oxford south maybe toward Lake Orion. I mean, it would be really interesting to see. Um, we'll see how that one goes. I mean, but... For Oxford, they had a nice year. I mean, 11 wins this year. Um, but honestly, when you look at um, when you look at it, um, you know, kind of an up and down year for the very young team. Um, be curious to see what they do next year. I mean, you got Sophie Rock coming back. You have Allison Huffstedler, Mia Champagne, um, Emma Bugs. I mean, there's others on that team. I mean, Brittany Cardona's a player to watch for next year. Um, a lot of questions with Oxford. Um, let's go now to district number, um, 29. This was at water for my, a lot of drama here. Um, with Lake Warren and Clarkston, um, Clarkston, no issue with water for my Lake Warren, no issue with water for Kettering. But then the, you knew that it, this was going to be the game to watch was that matchup between the dragons and the wolves. Um, Lake Orion led all the game except 1.6 seconds where Clarkson made a play. I mean, Ella, Ella Morgan made the um, a last second layup um, to um, break the Dragons' heart, deny them their um, chance for a three peat of district for a district title. Um, you know, Clarkson won that one 41 40. Um, you know, and there was a lot of heartbreak for the Dragons in that game. Just a lot of heartbreak. Um, Eliana Roback did come back and play. Um, I didn't think she looked looked great. I thought Brooklyn Colbert had 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 some um, issues against Lake Orion's defense. I thought Lake Orion's defense was very good. Um, normally, if you hold a team under forty five, you're going to win. Um, so when you look at Clarkson's moving on the next round. They're going to be playing Lakeland. Um, we're going to preview that one in a little bit. When you look at Lake Orion, um, just everything that they've been through. Um, you know, you look at what Coach Bob Bridges has done. Um, I think people are going to say, well, Lake Orion really overachieved this year. You know, winning 15 games. Um, had some good wins. I mean, they knocked off um, Bloopia Hills is still playing. They knocked off Clarkston. They knocked off Troy. Um Knocked off Plymouth. Knocked off Bay City Western. I mean, all those teams, really good teams. And when you look at Lake Orion next season, you know, you do lose you do lose Ellie Britt and Ryan Palachak, along with Allie Jones and Alexis Trostein. Those are going to be some big losses. But when you look at who they got coming back, I mean, you look at Izzy Walensky, um, you got Charlotte Pavlosky and Nevea Wood. Those are going to be three big players to rely on this year. Plus, you're going to have reinforcements coming. When you look at the bench this year, Lake Orion was really young. And when you look at their JV program, I mean, they had a nice year. I mean, you know, one of 14 games. I mean, like, their freshman went 17. Um, so there is 
talent coming with this with this group. There is some talent coming for Coach Bob Bridges. It's just next year, it's just this summer is going to be the key for the Dragons is can they, you know, you know, can they build on that depth? Can they build depth? You know, that if they build on the depth, that's going to take a lot of pressure off Izzy Walensky, Charlotte Peploski, and Nevaeh Wood. So that's going to be the key when you look at Lake Ori is, you know, you got to take the pressure off those three girls. And, you know, because they played an extended amount of minutes, you know, and then who's going to replace Ryan Palachek's production? That's going to be the key for Coach Bob Bridges. There's a lot of questions when I look at Lake Orion heading in the next year is where do they go? But I'll tell you what, next year, this team's going to be very dangerous next year. I think the Dragons can be really, really dangerous next year. And they got the pieces. They got, I mean, like, they had that heartbreaking loss. That's going to be used as motivation. Um, you know, so Lake Orion's going to be, I think they're going to be a really dangerous team next year under Coach Bob Bridges. They're going to be really dangerous. Um, then let's go to district number, I think, 28. This was at Stony Creek. Um, Stony Creek ended up winning their district, knocking off Rochester. Um, 37-32. Um, when I look at um, Stony Creek, and obviously Sarah LaPrairie is going to be the one that stands out. Um, you got the Avaj sisters and Merrick Swaback. Obviously, they stand out as well. Um, the teams that were in this district, um, Adams come, had a great win against Romeo that went, I mean, against Utica. I thought it went to overtime. Um, you know, and Fate Zolas had a nice game for Coach Joe Marburg's team. And then they had Stony, and then they and they had a tight one with Stony Creek, um, losing the district semifinal. When I look at Adams, I'll tell you what, I, I like where they're going. I really like the program, I mean, like where they're at right now. Program strength's on the rise there. Um, your JV was solid. Um, their freshman was not bad. I mean, you know, when I look at Joe Malberg's team, I mean, there's a lot of promise when you look at Adams. Um, I'll pretty much have Coach Joe Malberg on the podcast um, sometime, you know, when the um, districts come out. I want to see what his thoughts are when the um, districts do come out in a couple um, in a couple months um, in June when the districts do come out. Um, when I look at Adams, Adams is going to be, I think Adams is going to be good. It doesn't matter what division they're in. I think they're going to be a player. I really do. Um, so when I look at Adams next year, they're going to be scary. I mean, they're going to be a scary, scary team. I don't think not a lot of people want to play them. Um, then there's Rochester. Rochester, of course, went to the district final, um, knocked off Romeo in the first, in the, in the um, district semis, um, behind their vaunted defense. Um, obviously when you look at Rochester, everything starts and ends with Alice Max and Kylie Robinson. The guards are still a issue for Rochester, even with Lucy Cook. Um, they do lose Caitlin Guglielmo. That's going to be a big loss. But you look at that JV team they had this year under Coach Jeff Haney. Um, they're going to be fine. Um, they, there's a couple guards I'm really high on with them. Um, I mean, they got. I mean, they got the size. I mean, they're going to be very competitive next year. I think Rochester is a team that they're going to be competitive. Um, so for Coach Bill Thurston, it's going to come down to his guard play. Um, that's going to be the big key for him this off season. Is if they can get that guard, if they can get the guard play figured out, then I'll tell you what. I think they're going to be a scary team. I mean, we'll see. But it's going to come down to guard play with Rochester heading for them in the next year. Next district we're going to talk about here is over at um, Troy as over at Troy Athens. Um, this district was wild. Um, Obviously, you look at, um, you know, Bloom Bay Hills ended up winning this district. They were the A team in that district. They knocked off Troy Athens. Um, when you look at Troy Athens, they do lose four seniors, um, including Abby Malone. Um, Alex Link comes back for Coach J.C. Klump. Um, they got others as well coming back for Troy Athens. Uh, for me, with Troy Athens, it comes down to consistency. Um, consistency is always the hallmark of greatness. That's how I look at with Troy Athens. And that's going to be the key for them next year is consistency. 
there were some games they looked really good, and then there were some games going like, what are you doing? So when I look at Troy Athens next year, I think they're going to be in the mix. I mean, progress strength looks solid for Coach J.C. Klump. Um, I know they had a great freshman year. Um, their freshman class is very good. Um, so when I look at Athens, I think the future is bright for them. I, I really do. I mean, their freshman program was very good. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with them. Um, Avondale. Um, Avondale played Seaholm. Obviously, when you look at Avondale, the injury bug really derailed them this year. But if you're Coach Roy Krishman, you're going to have, I think you're going to be much better next year. Now, the question for me is, with them, is do they want a league title? Do they want, or do they want to find ways to get the program better? Because I'll tell you what, right now, I still got some worries about program strength with Avondale. Um, obviously, you do return several key players. Um, many Weathers is back. Um, come on, Bradley's a solid player. Um, Avondale's not a bad team. I mean, they just need depth. I think they need, like, they just got to have players get healthy, especially Shasha McClendon's one of them that I'm really high on, is if they can, if she can get healthy and have a full, full-fledged full healthy year, I'll tell you what, Avondale could be back in the conversation. Um, and I think Avondale will be back in the conversation. So, we'll see. I mean, program strength is a big concern for Christian. Um, but that's going to be the key going forward, is can Avondale find a way to build program strength? That's the big question I have for them going forward. Um, then you have Troy. Um, when I look at Troy and, you know, the season they had, started off 3-7, and seven, um, going through a transition period for Coach Laura Guzman, and then they went, and then they went on a big winning streak. They turned things around, got hot real quick. Um, when I look, and then they had that tough loss to, um, Bloomfield Hills, um, and it was a wild game, too, over there. It was a wild game. I mean, crazy game. It was 64-46, but, you know, but the difference in that game was Bloomfield Hills' the size. Um, Brianna Young had a big game in that one for Bloomfield Hills. Um, Diamond Prince had a nice game. But when I look at Troy's problem was you look at Reagan Zider and Olivia Sprangler, they're very good shooters. But they're defensive liabilities. And I'm not being mean here. I know Rusty Zider very well. But there's one thing that I look at with especially Zider's game. Defense. Defense, defense, defense. A big question mark. I mean, there's some times she looks good. But then there's some times you're going like, what are you doing? Um, But Reagan Zider had a nice year. Diamond Prince had a nice year. Carly Hagenbottom had a nice year. Um, Libya Sprangler had a nice year. Carly Block. Carlos Satanas had a nice year. Um, I'll tell you what. That Troy team was is very young. And then you bring in Macy Zider next year. And I know a lot of people are high on her. Yours truly is also high on Macy Zider for um, Coach Guzman. Troy's going to be in the conversation next year. They're going to be in the conversation. My question with Troy is going to be is who's going to want the ball? Who's going to want it? You know, you got Diamond, obviously. You got Reagan Zider. You got Olivia Sprangler. That's a three-headed monster right there. Plus, you have Carly Block, who's your defensive stopper. Um, And then, of course, Carly Hagenbottom in the interior. So, there's a lot of promise for Troy. Despite program strength being a concern, um, for them, their JV and freshman programs. I know Troy's going to be a player next year. I expect the Colts to be a player next year. And there's a lot to like with that Troy team. There is a lot to like with the Colts. Even though the football schedule thing they released, though, I don't know what the heck they were doing there. But, I mean, that's a debate for coach, for um, athletic coordinator Shane Hines to figure that one out. But, I'll tell you what. Troy's girls are going to be very good next year. They're going to be very good. <laughs> and there's Seaholm. When I look at Seaholm, you know, they're going to be good next year. I mean, they got to the district final, went to overtime with Bloomfield Hills, had a tough loss to them. Um, 
but you got to love the future for Coach Chris Manchester's team. They got a lot of experience coming back. A lot of experience. And it's proven experience. I mean, Mary Gumbus is a good player. Addie Flynn's a good player. Um, They got others on that team that I can't name right now who are just really talented players. Um, But I'm telling you, Seal's going to be a player next year. They're going to be a player. <laughs> so, a lot to like with Seahaw. I mean, a lot to like, even though they lost in the district final. Um, but there's a lot to like with Birmingham Seahome. They're going to be solid next year. Um, let's go now to district number 20, um, district number 25. Of course, this was over at, um, 22. This was over at, um, Farm Tales Mercy. Um, West Bloomfield. You had West Bloomfield, Farm Tales Mercy. Uh, West Bloomfield, um, South, um, West Bloomfield was in this one, along with North Farms and Farmington. Um, Farmington. It was a rough year for them. Really rough year. I mean, they had an injury to their um, top player, Eddie Murray King. Um, oh, actually, no. Um, what am I thinking? Um, but they did have a key injury to one to their best player lat this year, um, tore ACL. Um, and for Farmington, I'm curious to see how they do next year. Because program strength's a concern for me for Coach Natalie Nowak. Um, you don't know what's going to happen with them. You don't know. A lot of questions. A lot of questions for Farmington. A lot of questions. You know, their only win this year was against Ferndale University. And we know how young <laughs> they are um, under Coach Brianna Rowe. Um, they're going to be a young group next year. So I'm curious to see... What happens with Farmington? Um, we're going to see what happens with them. Um, North Farmington. Um, you look at the Raiders. They had a nice year. I mean, even though, you know, you look at there was a transition period for North Farmington going from Jeff Simpson to um, Michael Lawlin. Um Of course, you returned. They had some key players. They had a, they had, um, a Sia Jihad. Um, they had Anaya Billups who transferred from transferred in from um, Detroit Edison, and then Hannah Hart. Relied a lot on those three girls this year. I mean, Quinnahee Jihad had a nice year for them. She's going to be a sophomore. She's going to be the best player next year. Um, program strength still an issue when I look at North Farmington. A um, lot of questions heading into next year for the Raiders. Um, you do lose Jihad. You lose Billups. Um, those are going to be two big losses for Coach Michael Lawlin. Um, so we're going to see what direction North Farmington goes next year. So it'll be interesting to see how they do heading into next year. So we'll see what happens. Um, and then West Bloomfield, they're still playing. We're going to talk about them. They got a big one coming up with Detroit Renaissance looming in that one. Um, district number 25, um, this was Adam Warren Cousineau. Um, Royal Oak and Groves were in this one. Um, Royal Oak, of course, won the M regional of the district. This was their first ever, um, regional, uh, first ever district title under coach Brian Zapata, first in school history. Emily Whalen's going to be probably be, um, you know, she made the last second layup to win that game against Warren Cousineau. Um, you know, she, on, on, I'm going to tell you, when I look at Royal Oak, they're a scary team. And when you look at that regional, they're going to be playing with house money. I mean, they're going to be playing with nothing to lose. Everything again. So when I look at Groves in this district, um, lost a tough one to Royal Oak. Future's bright with this team. I mean, the future's bright. Groves had some really good promising freshmen on this team. Uh, very good young talent on this team. They do lose Sierra Rocco. That's going to be a big loss for Coach Allison Heidi. Um, they do lose some key players as well. But when you look at Groves, I mean, like, they're going to be an interesting team to watch this offseason. I think they're going to need a big summer. I really think Groves will be a team to really watch for, see how they do this summer. I mean, really, that's going to be the key for them is can they build on, you know, what they built this season? That's the big question I have with the Falcons going forward is can they build 
on what they've done. So, Groves had that tough loss to Royal Oak, 47-35 in the district semifinals. Royal Oak, of course, as mentioned, went on to win the, um, win the district. Um, they knocked off um, Warren Cousin, 43-41 on their home floor um, on that win, on that last second layup by Emily Whalen. Um, by Emmy Whalen. Um, Emmy Walden, by the way. Emmy Walden, I apologize for that. Um, but... He, I mean, congrats to Coach Bryant upon his first district championship um, and the first in school history at Royal Oak. So, And then our last district here, district number 23. This was at Berkeley. Um, Detroit Renaissance ended up winning this district. Um, they knocked off Berkeley in the district final. 60-29 was the score. Um, when you look at Southfield Arts and Tech, I mean, Oak Park, they took on A&T. Um, and had no issue with, um, Oak Park, um, Oak Park this year, still a very young team, um, still offensively challenged. Um, that's gonna be a challenge for Coach Tyron Thompson, for Coach Thompson hanging in the next year. That's gonna be a big challenge for them is where are they going to find offensively? That's the big question for the Knights going forward. Um, and then you look at A&T, um, A&T is a real funny team this year. I mean, they were really interesting this year. I mean, there were some games where they looked really good offensively. And then there were some games like you're saying to yourself, you're giving up a ton of points, man. I mean, what's going on here with your defense? I mean, you look at a and there were two games in particular that I want to talk about with a and The 97 points they gave to West Bloomfield I know they gave 70 to, to Lamoni Stevenson. And then, in the second round, you give up 91 to Detroit Renaissance and get blown up by 61 points. So I'm curious to see what Coach um, Shakita Coltrane is going to do this offseason. You return two key players, and um, Kamara Page and um, Christian Banks. You lose to my Fritz. That's going to be a big loss. Um, but this team's got to be committed defensively. My goodness. This team defensively, I don't know if I could trust this team defensively heading into next year. Because I'll tell you what right now. That team defensively, if they can figure it out right now, I'll tell you what. If they can next year, they got to get it figured out. Because if they don't, we're going to see what happens with A&T. Because that's going to be the key going forward with them. It's what do they do defensively? That's the big question I have with A&T. And then let's look at Berkeley. The Berkeley Bears had a good year. Had a great year. I mean, 17 games they won. They built their program strengths back. They had a freshman program this year. I was very happy about that. Um, Coach Clay Shaver's done a wonderful job with that program. He's done a wonderful job with that program. You look at players like Mavie Nolan. I mean, like, she was a senior this year. She had a great year. But look at the underclassmen on that team. Avery Wintergarden, Haley Kirkwood, Maddie Boswell. Um, you got Maddie Stills. I mean, I'll tell you what. Berkeley is going to be scary next year. And Coach Clay Shaver's done a really good job with that program. Very creative with the Twitter feed, though. Very creative with that. I really like what he did. But Berkeley won some games that were just legit this year. Knocked off Troy. You knock off a very good, um, and then the postseason, you go and knock off a, um, knock off Redford Thurston, who won 13 games, won 12 games this year. Then you go and knock off Detroit Mumford. That's incredible when you knock them off. I mean, you had Detroit Mumford in a losing year, but their NPR points were off the chart. And Berkeley went and knocked them off. So now you look at next year with Berkeley is now you got a template for them heading into next year. You're building your program strength. You got proven talent coming back. I'm telling you. This Berkeley team's going to be absolutely scary. It's going to be absolutely scary when I look at the Bears next year. 
Berkeley is going to be a team that I don't think anybody wants to see because they play defense, they're well coached, they're, they're experienced, and they got proven talent on that team. There's a lot to like with Berkeley. A lot to like with them. Okay, now let's look at the regional matchups. Um, region 15 over at um, Hazel Park. We got um, we got um, Harper Woods are taking on Warren Fitzgerald. Um, on the other side, you got Birmingham Detroit Country Day is on the other side of that of that um, region. Um, like I said, they're taking on Detroit Edison. Um, I, I think this region's gonna be all. I think this region's gonna be all. Um, all Detroit Country Day. I don't see how Harper Woods gets by Warren Fitzgerald. Um, in the in the um regional semifinals, I'd be shocked if they did. Warren Fitzgerald's a really good team. Um, well coached. Um, they got experience as well. So I don't know how the Pioneers can knock out the Spartans. Um, in that region. So we'll see what happens there in that one. But it'll be a tall order for them. Um, in that one. Um, then you have um. Let's go to the region over at um, Milford. Um, Clarkson takes on Lakeland. And then you have um, Howell and Grand Blank. That's going to be an interesting match of Howell and Grand Blank. That's going to be really interesting. Clarkson should have no issue with Lakeland. I mean, you look at the Wolves, obviously, with Eliana Roback back. Um, you got um, Brooklyn Culver, Emily Valencia. Um, you got um, Ella Magner. Um when I look at Clark, Clarkson should have no issue in that in their regional semifinal match with Lakeland. I'd be shocked if this game's close, and I'd be shocked if Lakeland upsets them. Because I don't think they match up really well with Roback or um, Colbert in that match. They, they, they just don't match up well. Now, how in Grand Blank is going to be interesting? Obviously... Hart, obviously, Howell coming off that overtime win against um, Hartland. Um, they do have a star player in Gabby Peichel, um, which that's going to be interesting to see how she does against Grand Blank. Grand Blank's defense is, they're nasty. They're legit. I mean, they're well coached, too. I mean, they've done a good job. I mean, I'll tell you that much. And they match up well in this district. They, they were in this region. They match up really well. Um, so when I look at this matchup here, I think Grand Blank does beat Howell. I just, I just think Grand Blank beats him because I just don't know if Grand Blank can. I don't know if um Pike. I mean, if Pike goes off for about thirty points, then so be it. You know, but I just think that if. You know, obviously with with them um, with how I mean how they they're a good team, really good team. But I just think Grand Blank's gonna knock them off here. I think Grand Blank wins this one. And then I have Grand Blank and Clarkson in the district final. Um, I like Grand Blank in that one. I don't know how Clarkson matches inside with them. Grand Blank's got size. I mean, they're gonna give Clarkson problems. I mean, the last time they played him, I think it was in the Motor City Round Ball, um, last year. Where Grand Blank just literally destroyed Clarkston. They literally destroyed them. Um, so I don't think Clarkston matches up well with Grand Blank. Um, so I'm gonna take Grand Blank in this. But I think Grand Blank moves on that regional. And then our last dish regionals over at Macomb, Dakota, Stony Creek, Bloomfield Hills. Um, but I also forgot to mention over that over there, Adam Milford. How and Clarkson played each other this year. Clarkson won that game, had to survive that game. So it'll be interesting if it's How and Clarkston. But I just think Grand Blank, you know what I mean? Grand Blank's a much tougher match for Clarkson than How was for Clarkson. If it's How and Clarkston, I think How is motivated. They get the revenge. So apologies to Coach Aaron Goodnow um, and the Jeff Cozen and the Wolves Nation. Um, I got Grand Blank winning that one. Um, and if Howell plays him, I got Howell win that one. So if you're Dan Leach, you know what I mean? You're going to be proud of me with that projection. And then their last regionals over at, um, at Macomb, Dakota. Um, you got Macomb, Dakota taking on Chippewa Valley. Stony Creek taking on, um, Bloomfield Hills. Um, Stony and Bloomfield is interesting because Stony's got issues. Stony's got the guards. Bloomfield Hills has the interior. 
when you look at players like Ruby Smith, um, Brianna Young's had an incredible postseason. Um, Brianna Young's going to be scary. She's a scary player. Really is. Stony Creek, we know, has got Sarah La Prairie. Um, they got Merrick Schwabach and the Avash sisters. I think Avash is going to have a really tough time in this match against Blue Hills. They had it early in the year. But I think the difference was in that game was Stony Creek was adjusting from to um, Coach Columbus Williams from Kellen James. So when I look at this matchup here, um, it wouldn't surprise me if Blue Hills upset Stony. But I think Stony Creek's going to win this game because of the um, because of C Sarah La Prairie. I think that's going to be the difference in that one. Chippewa Valley, Macomb, Dakota. Chippewa Valley is playing with house money. Um, Macomb, Dakota, I think wins this one being at home. And then region final, I have Macomb, Dakota taking on um, Stony Creek. I got Dakota winning this one being because of home court. Um, I, I just think Dakota... Difference, difference having being at home is going to be a big factor. They're probably going to bring their fans, um, and I think it'll be very interesting to see. So I got Dakota winning that regional, even if over Stony Creek and Bloomfield Hills. Um, I'd be shocked if Chippewa Valley upsets Dakota, um, but at the end of the day here, I, I just got um, I got, I mean like Macomb Dakota on their home floor, um, home floor mat, home court matters here. In this regional. And then our last regional. We got them um, over at Birmingham Marion. Um, you got. You got Royal Oak taking on. Um, Growth Point North. And then um, West Bloomfield Detroit Renaissance. Whew. Royal Oak and Growth Point North. Royal Oak's basically playing with house money. They got experience. But I think when you look at Coach Brian Spada's team. They are playing with absolute house money. And. This will be interesting. Because Royal Oak, you know, obviously when you look at the Ravens, they haven't been here before. So I don't know what the, how they're going to treat this. You know, if they're going to treat it like a regular game, I don't know. But taking on a, a very talented player, Natalie Babcock, and the Norseman of Growth Point North, who's been here numerous times, well coached as well. Um, I just don't know if I see Royal Oak winning this game against them. Um, Growth Point North. I just think the difference is um, area. I think the difference is Babcock. I think she has a big game for um, Growth Point North. And that'll be interesting to see how that one goes. And then you have the battle of two Final Four teams that were in the, um, that were in there last year. West Bloomfield, Detroit Renaissance. Oh, man, this is going to be interesting. This could be a high-scoring game. This could be a high-scoring game. Both teams have experience. Both teams are well-coached. Um, West Bloomfield did have some issue against Frontiers Mercy in the district final. But they ended up pulling away in the second half. Both Davis sisters are going to have to be key. Destiny Washington's going to have to be key. Um, going up against Hardy of uh, Detroit Renaissance. Um, I think West Bloomfield gets this one. But it wouldn't surprise me if this game is like 62 to 51 or 64-61. I mean, like, it'll be interesting because I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. Both teams score in bunches. Both teams like to go up and down. Both teams have speed. Whoever wins this game is most likely going to the Breslin Center and most likely having to see Rockford on the other side. So, but in this matchup here, I think West Bloomfield gets the job done. I think there's too much motivation there. Um, Kendall Hendricks is the wild card in this one. I think she gets it done. Um, you know, along with the Davis sisters, the Davis sisters are going to get so much attention. Um, uh, but Kendall Hendricks, I think is the one I'm really watching for. And I think West Bloomfield wins that regional. Um, <laughs> I think the Lakers have too much experience, um, being there. Um, obviously I think West Bloomfield does get the job done, um, in that regional. Um, before I preview the boys basketball um, quarterfinal matchup, I want to send my congratulations to Groves as a um, swim and dive team for winning Division Two in swimming. Seaholm was second. Um, Farmington was third. It was one point that separated three teams. Um, I think it was 585. And then um, Seaholm and um, Farmington were second with five, and third with 584 each. <laughs> Division One, um, Ann Arbor Pioneer won that one. Um, don't have the um, 
stats with me. Um, they're on the blog at Saginaw by 4650 at blogspot.com. Also on the ON TV blog as well. So the um, results of the um, swim meets over at Oakland University and where Groves won their um, repeated as Division II state championships. That was at Eastern Michigan in the Ypsilanti. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but congratulations to Groves Swim and Dive for winning a state championship. Troy and Synchronized Swimming winning a state championship as well. Uh, so congratulations to Troy Athens um, winning that um, winning that state championship and synchronized swimming as well. So let's go now to boys basketball, the previous state quarterfinal matchup. I uh, mentioned we have one team left um, in the regional. Obviously, um, we had a couple teams that were in the regionals. Clarkson, Groves were also in it. Clarkson had a lot of trouble with Grand Blank. Um, one eighteen for three, not going to get it done. Um, they end up losing that one, 49-32. Um, when I look at Clarkson next year, um, they do return, they do return Hayden Flavin. They do return um, Cole Charter. Um, they lose Peyton Fitzsimmons. It's a big loss for them. Um, but you can't go one of 18 for three and win. I mean, they were red hot in their district final against Waterford Mott. Um, but, you know, when you look at the Wolves, Program strength is solid, but there's still some question marks. I mean, John Call comes back as well. I mean, Call is going to really help them at the guards. Um, so when I look at Clarkston, they'll be back. But the question for me is, will they get to the level we're accustomed to seeing? That's the big question I have with Clarkston is, will they get back to that level? And that's the big question I have with the Wolves heading in for next year. So Clarkston, you know what I mean? It'll be interesting to see what they do. This summer, they're going to be a key team to watch. Um, we'll see what happens with them. Um, Groves and North Farmington battled in the regional semifinal at Detroit Renaissance. Groves and North Farmington winning that one. Um, when I look at Groves, um, I think Groves is built for the future. I really like where this team is at, especially when you turn three three quality players in John Simpson, Josh Gibson, and um, Paul Hubbard. I mean, Coach Mark West has done a really nice job with that team. Program strength looks to be solid for Groves, um, but we'll see. I mean, Groves, they're, they're a scary team. I don't think anybody wants to see them next year. I mean, they're going to be a scary team no matter what happens in their district. Um, I Honestly, I think they can give a Catholic League team problems. I really do. Um, and then we look at, um, you know, and then we look at, um, and then North Farmington knocked off Warren D. LaSalle. Um, they were down 12. Came back, tied it up. Um, I mean, Ari Meitzer um, hit two free throws. Um, Warren D. LaSalle ended up hitting a, um, hitting a three. Ended up being 54-53 with the final score. Um, big win for Coach John Negotian. Um, getting that district, getting that regional title to North Farmington. Um, after, you know, when you look at what North Farmington three year, I mean, like, obviously, last year kind of was like a... Um, like a statement point, obviously, what what happened to them against Orchard Lake St. Mary's, where I thought that game was just very questionable fishing in that game last year against Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Could they get another crack at St. Mary's? I don't know. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, but North Farmington, they're in the state quarterfinals. Got a very interesting matchup coming up with River Rouge. I mean. When I look at the matchup here in the state quarterfinal at Callahan Hall um, on the campus of Detroit Mercy, um, it's going to be interesting because River Rouge is coming off. Uh, they won their district, um, not, knocked off Dearborn, who came in undefeated, and they needed free throws from their um, senior captain. Um, he was huge for them in their um, one-point win against them. Um, Against Dearborn, they also knocked off Detroit Cass Tech, who was the defending Division One state champions um, in the regional semifinals. They knocked off Wyandotte Roosevelt um, in the regional final. So they're riding with a lot of confidence right now when you look at River Rouge. I mean, <coughs> they're playing with no fear. And they got a star player on that team as well. Um, but I don't know if they've seen a defense like what they're going to see with North Farmington. That 2-2-1 full court trap. Um, that coach Todd Negotian loves. Um, now I'm curious to see how he's going to play it 
on a big court because, you know, I'm not being mean. I mean, Livonia Stevenson's court's pretty small. Now, Detroit Renaissance's court, a little bit bigger, um, but they found a way to win that game. And credit, you know, credit Coach Negotians and his team. Obviously, you look at players like Tyler Spratt and Landon Williams. Um, Robert Smith has really came and helped that team over at North. Um <laughs> So there's a lot of talent over there at North that just with the Negotian family tree, um, you know what's going on over there at North. So obviously when you look at North, I'm hoping if North does win the state title, um, maybe we get Coach Todd Negotian on the phone here next week. So we'll see what happens. Um, I got to give like, you know, obviously when you look at North, I mean, I look at that matchup and I think it looks winnable for North. Um, I think North's got a great chance to win that game. I mean, they got a really good chance to win that game. If they can get by River Rouge, then they would have to see the winner of Muskegon and Zeeland West. Now, North Farmington did go to the west side of the state. They knocked out Muskegon. Um, they played Zeeland West earlier in the year. They know both teams quite well. And Zeeland West has had an incredible run this tournament. Um, they upset East They upset East Kentwood. Um, they knocked off Grand Rapids Forest Hill Northern. Um, so when I look at, you know, when I look at, um, Zeeland West, I mean, the, um, the duh is what they call, um, they're a good team. I mean, they're a solid team. Muskegon, we know, we know the proven power they are every year. They're a solid program as well. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how, you know, that match would go in the state semifinals. Um, if Muskegon or Zeeland West were to play North Farmington, it would be really interesting. Then you look at the other side, you have Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, and Brother Rice, Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, still really upset about what Birmingham Brother Rice did, especially against Troy. Um, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's had no issue with um, with Milford, and then they just went and just beat Grand Blank in the regional final. Um, I know a lot of people get sick and tired of, like, with the Catholic League and all that. Um, you know, obviously, when you look at that win against um, UD, um, Warren D. LaSalle from North Farms, and that was a Big, big win for them, knocking off a very good Orchard Lake, um, Warren D. LaSalle team. But I know there's some people here that are, you know, that are um, not a big fan of the Catholic League. I mean, you know, you look at what they do. I mean, they recruit a lot. I mean, like, you look at, you know, and, you know, and I thought about writing a column about it, but, you know, but it is what it is. So we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens. Um, Spring sports start up this week. Obviously, when you look at training, they start up this week. You look at baseball, softball, lacrosse, track and field. Um, you got the introduction of boys volleyball um, to the fold, which is always going to be interesting. Well, that would be very interesting. Um, very curious to see what teams do boys volleyball. Um, and then, of course, you have tennis starting up. You have... Um, um, you know, so a lot of spring sports starting up, which should be really interesting um, to see how um, how things will go. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at preview the seasons, um, you know, obviously track and field will be very interesting to watch. Um, baseball will be, uh, also be very interesting to watch. So will be softball. Um, lacrosse, you know, it'll be interesting. Boys lacrosse, girls lacrosse. Um, you know, you got to know your teams. You know what I mean? So... We'll see what happens. Um, everybody, I'm going to sign off here before I sign off. As I mentioned, congratulations to the um, Groves um, Swim and Dive team for winning a Division II state championship. Uh, Troy Athens Synchronized Swimming Team for winning their state championship. Um, also, um, best of luck to North Farmington in the Amboy State quarterfinals against River Rouge. If they get on, if they win that one, they'll be going to the Breslin Center against either Muskegon or... Um, Zeeland West, and if they win that, state final most likely probably be against either Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, or Birmingham Brother Rice. Um, girls court, girls regionals starting up this week as well. Um, with their with their um, conclusion, the quarterfinals, the um, state finals, and the um, finals with starting up next week. So a lot to look at these final two weeks of the basketball season. Um, I'll also be releasing shortcomings as well for each team. Um, it'll be also be on my blog and about either the boys will probably be either by this weekend, the girls will be sometime next week. So we'll see what happens going forward with each team. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody.
Take care. God bless you. See you all soon. See you all soon. And see you next week. God bless all.